In today's video, we're going to be talking about why 90s comics are the future of comic book collecting. Right here, right now, coming at you. Hello to all of my fans of 90s comic books. Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. Yes, I said it. 90s comics are the future of comic book collecting. You're probably all thinking that I am completely and utterly out of my mind. Because if you've been in comic book collecting, whether it's for a long time or just a short period of time, you probably have heard at one point or another that 90s comics are totally worthless as collectibles. Well, I'm here to tell you today that now more than ever, that is untrue. You see, a very interesting paradigm shift has been going on in the comic book collecting world of late, and that involves the prices of comic books skyrocketing. So if you've been collecting comic books for a while, or again, if you're just getting into it, you know that comic books as collectibles are very expensive. Comic books from the Silver Age nowadays, for any of the key issues from that time, the virtual elite untouchable. They're so expensive for your average collector. And comic books in the Bronze Age, which were once reasonably priced, even for some key issues, those are even getting out of control with respect to prices. So what is happening now? Collectors of comic books who don't want to dish out a lot of cash for their comic book collectibles are now resorting to cheaper comic books. And if you want cheaper comic books, where do you go? you go to 90s comics. Now, I must admit, I am a little bit biased when it comes to this topic because if you've been watching this channel for a while, you will, you will know that I am a huge fan of 90s comic books. The 90s is often considered by collectors to be an era of superficiality and poor quality comic books. Way too much chrome and way too many gimmicks. And in a way, I would agree with that. Not everything that came out in the 90s was good. In fact, most things that came out in the 1990s were terrible with respect to story and art. Comics were selling so well in the 1990s that it really didn't matter what publishers were putting out, people were buying it. But among all the crap in the 1990s, there were actually some really good books that came out. And those are the books nowadays that are actually increasing in price. Now these books were previously not worth much as collectibles, but if you go and try to buy some of them today, you're gonna find that they have increased significantly in price. Now, I'm not going to go through the books one by one that have increased in price that are coming out of the 1990s era, but I do want to illustrate a few examples of books that have increased in price significantly in recent years. And I can only attribute the success and the price increases for these books to the fact that so many collectors are getting tired of the high prices of 1970s, 60s, and even 80s comic books that they're now moving to 1990s to get their collecting fix. Now, of course, there are other factors such as movies, movie appearances of particular characters, movie appearances of particular story arcs, so on and so forth. But in general, there, there have even been articles published in the Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide that are explaining this trend. This is really catching people's eye now that people are not wanting to spend so much for comics anymore, so they're moving to the 90s, and that thereby is jacking up the prices of 1990s books as well. Now, I don't want to over-exaggerate how much these books have increased in price because they do not compare to some of the collectible books from the Bronze Age, Silver Age, Golden Age, etc., etc. But the fact that these books have gone up in price when they were previously considered worthless, not even worth the paper that they were printed on, it's, it's pretty astounding. So here's an example from the collection that my dad gave me. This is Venom Lethal Protector number one from 1993. It's got that nice shiny cover, just the way God intended. The cover price for this comic was $2.95, but today you can buy it on eBay for six cents, or you can splurge and get the whole series for just $2, which is still cheaper than this one comic was back 
when it first came out. I absolutely love that clip. This is from Scott Nicewander of NerdSync's video about how comic book collecting almost ruined the industry. I just love how he shows that on eBay, a copy of Venom the Lethal Protector was going for cents. Just, just mere cents. You could even get the whole collection for just a few cents. But nowadays, if you want to add Venom the Lethal Protector to your comic book collection, this is what you're going to be expecting to pay in and around. Now, mind you, you could find deals as always. And eBay by far is not the best place to search for comic book collectibles. Now, of course, you couldn't, you can get deals if you're really kind of stocking the pages and you're, and you're stocking the, uh, the auctions. Another book that comes to mind when I'm thinking about 90s comics that have really increased in price, I'm thinking of this one. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 361. This is the first appearance of Carnage. And I have personal experience with this book because I've been collecting comic books now for about, mm, I've been seriously collecting probably for about 10 years in and around. I remember I bought this book probably eight years ago and I spent $7 on it. $7. Do you know how much this book is going for now? Here's an example of an eBay listing for The Amazing Spider-Man number 361. Now you're probably thinking, oh, The Amazing Spider-Man number 361 that you have is probably in terrible condition. No, it is like pristine. It is a really nice copy that I got for $7 and this is what it is going for now. It is absolutely insane. I, my jaw dropped when I saw this. Actually, if you've been with me for a really long time watching this channel, I did a video when I first started YouTube talking about affordable key issues of comic books to collect and add to your collection. This book was actually on it. I stated this book as being under $10. That is definitely not the case anymore. Another book that I'm thinking of is X-Force number two. X-Force was one of the hottest selling books in the 1990s. The print runs on these books were so high. People were buying two, three, four copies of some of these books. And the fact that there were so many of them floating around comic book shops and in people's collections rendered a lot of these X-Force books worthless. Up until now. Any of you ever heard of X-Force number two? Well, this is the second appearance of Deadpool. A few years back, you probably could have found the second appearance of Deadpool in a back issue bargain bin for probably 50 cents. Now, you're probably seeing this type of book on a wall. And this book usually goes up in price significantly around the time when a new Deadpool movie comes out. Now, the hype on this book has gone down a little bit, but you certainly probably will not find this book in bargain bins anymore. I've had personal experience with so many of these 90s books, me buying them really, really cheap and now seeing what they're going for now and just thinking like, what the heck? Happen. Another book I'm thinking of is this one here. This de issue of Detective Comics is the first appearance of Anarchy. I bought this thing in near mint condition and I got it out of a bargain bin. I spent $1 for it. This is what it is going for now. Big change from a dollar if you ask me. Other books that I'm thinking of in particular are the Infinity Gauntlet series. Now this here was uh, pushed up in price partially because of the Infinity war movies, Avengers movies, uh, for sure. But I remember when I bought these books, they were not expensive at all. They are now up there. They're pretty expensive now. Spawn number one, The Death of Superman, The Breaking of the Bat. All of these books here formerly were not expensive at all. Now mind you, they're not out of anybody's price range now, but they are slowly going up in price. You see, new collectors that are coming into the hobby are not repelled by the fact that these types of books from the 1990s have a reputation for being worthless. Some people just want to have them because they were a moment in pop cultural history. I myself am like that. I personally don't care if a book is worthless. I will add it to my collection if I feel that there is some sort of pop cultural significance within that book. Heck, I even added Death Mate to my collection. Death Mate, I tried reading Death Mate. It is a piece of crap book. It, I don't understand one thing that is going on in it, but I still added it to my book because it is one of the infamously worst comic books 
published in the 1990s and everything that was wrong with the 1990s is embodied within this book. Death Maid is also another book that I can't believe has also gone up in value. I got every single book from the Death Mate series for a dollar. Every single book, not just one, but I got every single book for a dollar. They're now going for a little bit more than that. What the heck is going on? So I guess that's relatively good news for all of you that were teenagers in the 1990s and were buying comic books like they were going out of style, which ironically they, they were. Because previously you probably heard and thought that all the books that you have from the 1990s are completely worthless. But I'm here to tell you that there is a paradigm shift and there is a change happening in the comic book collecting world. And I would either hang on to those books a little longer, or if you're wanting to sell, you might want to try selling some now. But I must caution you, if you are looking to sell these books that you have from the 1990s, do not try to sell them in bulk all at once at a comic book store comic book store owners will not give you top dollar for it. They will give you probably pennies for each book because again, I don't blame them. They're, they're running a business and they have to make a profit as well. If you're looking to get the most that you can for your 1990s comics, what I'd recommend doing is researching some of the prices for the 1990s comics books that you have on eBay and trying to list them individually. I know it's a headache. It's a lot of work. It's a pain, but if you are determined to get a good price for your 1990s books, I would go that route. I also must caution you that the prices of all 1990s comic books are not going up. I don't want you to think that every single 1990s comic book you have is going to be worth something. Because like I said, there were a lot of comic books that were published in the 1990s and there were a lot that were sold. And that means that there are a lot of them out there that are not collectible at all. For example, chances are if you have anything published by Image Comics, it's probably going to be worthless. With the exception of maybe Spawn, uh, because Spawn is a beloved character, a character that is still in print today. But anything else really that was published by Image Comics, you can pretty much bet that it is not going to be worth anything. Also, some of those big Marvel books from the 1990s, like Spider-Man number one, and X-Force number one and X-Men number one. These books here are probably not going to be worth a lot either, with the exception of maybe some particular issues of Todd McFarlane's Spider-Man number one. You see, uh, this book had multiple covers uh, and some of the com covers were gold, silver, platinum, and those were like really exclusive. Like for example, a platinum cover for the number one is gonna be worth a lot of cash. But if you just have like a standard new, stand edition of this book, it's not gonna be worth anything. The silver might, edition might be worth a little bit more, but um, anything below silver is definitely not going to be worth anything. So that about does it for our video today. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions for me about 90s comics or the value of 90s comics, please let me know. I'm a huge fan of 90s comics. And let me know if you agree with me. Some people probably will not agree with me, but this is a trend that I've personally noticed and I really think you cannot ignore the fact that there are so many books that previously you could get for really, really cheap and now you're having to spend a little bit of cash for. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.